Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Horror Babble. Today we present a remastered version of a horror experience known simply as The Mansion. Originally featured on my YouTube channel, Muted Vocal, the recording was in need of some restoration. And so... It's cold and dark out there, in the Carpathian Mountains of Transylvania. But, nonetheless, I invite you to join me on a most unusual journey. If you're willing, then unto the mansion we go. by a number of dark horses, carries us through the winding and miscloaked roads of Transylvania. We number but a few, each of us in search of some nameless prize. The faceless gentleman we said goodbye to in Brasov promised a reward, a reward for each of us to be found in an undisclosed location far from the city and the canal. The canopy surrounding the road is dense, from which hundreds of spindly limbs tap upon the roof of the carriage like, like the, the fingers. fingers. We share glances and vacant stares as the wheels of the carriage rattle and roll. Twilight descends, bringing with it the distant howls of the wolf. And there it is. The silhouette of a large building slowly coming into focus. Strange angles transfix us. Seven spires rise awkwardly out of the brickwork. An higher still a tower dominates, host to a large, expressionless. Its hands tell us the time. Five minutes past seven. We climb from the carriage and stand before the mansion. Who are we? Have we journeyed together before? As we share glances, we label each other with usernames we've discovered online. Cyber identities. However, here in the Transylvanian forest, we're far beyond cyberspace. The mansion before us is dark against the violet sky. The bricks, pillars, and windows that constitute its facade are aesthetically pleasing. And as we watch, the unusual curves and lines begin to play tricks upon us. Are we seeing windows here? A subtle animation is at work, and as we continue to observe it, we discover the ability to redress the building's appearance. The brickwork is reminiscent of an educational facility, 
spent many years as children. Window frames conjure memories of the homes we lived as teenagers. And the numerable spires above conform to a suppressed memory of a city we once visited. The European capital? The bustling streets of New York City? Or the ever-chaotic labyrinth they call New Delhi? Wherever it is, the shapes we see allow us to recreate scenes from the deepest depths of our memories. Moments later, we are moving forward towards a large oak doorway. Distant howls as we, in silence, contemplate the doorway. Inexplicably, an antique knocker of unknown origin appears on the oak panelling. A moustached man holds the handle in his mouth. We choose to knock observing the lines on the face of the moustached man. As we do so, we see that he is elderly in appearance, with an expression that suggests indifference. The large doors open inward, revealing a spacious entrance hall. We step Inside. This is a familiar place. The hall is large, filled with pleasant aromas. The grand staircase ascends and divides, leading to corridors east. On the ground floor, a shiny marble surface leads to a number of doors, two to our east and two to our west. And to our immediate left, a blank canvas hangs upon the wall. <laughs> As we stand in the hall, we consider the purpose of our journey. The nameless prize we seek must be something specific. Why would we trust the word of a stranger if we hadn't believed the prize was something we sought all of our lives? Or maybe it's precisely the opposite. Whatever the situation, it's time to move on. Time to explore the deepest and darkest corners of this forgotten house. A decision has been made to head our separate ways. And as such, you find yourself alone within the hall. You contemplate your next move. The thought occurs to you that the mansion may be inexplicably large, and that your search may have to be systematic in order to find what it is you came here for. You cross the hall and enter the second doorway. Passageway, host to a variety of cabinets and dressers, greets you on the other side of the door. The walls here are lined with wooden panels, a few of which have been painted a crimson red. 
An unremarkable wall light produces a morbid pocket of light, dutifully battling the eternal persistence of darkness. And another anonymous looking door leads you into a larger space. An echo of some past event fills the space. Transparent figures sit in groups, each of them engaged in conversation. The figures are unaware of your presence as they continue to natter and gossip. Reeling from the abruptness of the slamming door, you see that the figures have gone. The room is empty and quiet. Wooden chairs are dotted about, dusty and tarnished. To your immediate left, you observe a large, opaque window. The glass has been covered entirely with paint, red. Crimson red. You shudder as you stare at the glass. The color itself is unsettling. With great haste, you cross the room and approach a set of double doors on the opposite side. Revealing a deserted dance studio. It's the sort of place you'd imagine to find young, nimble ballet dancers. However, this studio has long since been deserted. Strange shapes fill the studio. Oddities covered with white sheets. Items in storage, or perhaps suspended animation. The studio is poorly lit, the source of light being a scattering of slow burning candles. Shadows dance, instilling a sense of unease. A large mirror fills the entirety of the wall to your left optically increasing the size of the studio. Somewhere within the darkest recesses of your mind, a trigger is switched, and suddenly you're aware of a presence. The presence lacks form, yet it's there, scratching in the back of your mind. As you focus on the sheets before you, you see movement. Just shadows cast by flickering flames? No. Something stirs here. Something. Something. A shape in the furthest corner of the room begins to sway. Within seconds it is moving unnaturally. Shuffles towards you, unseen limbs twisting beneath its sheet. <laughs> and that presence you sensed has been made flesh, a flesh eager to reach you. A flesh with insidious intent. A bead of sweat appears on your forehead. You desperately want to run, but your feet are stuck to the floor. 
The shape beneath the sheet encroaches upon you, shuffling, muttering, reaching. As the shape approaches, you sense its intentions. It would appear as though its proximity is allowing it to access your thoughts, and even more worryingly, your fears. It knows, and it so desperately wants to slice you with it. The shape is almost on top of you. You can smell it. A foul odor fades your being, consuming you. Ancient breath is the source. Breath of the cursed. It takes almost all of your strength. You manage to avert its gaze, and in doing so, you spot another set of double doors to your right. With speed and agility, you dodge the incoming shape, navigate a series of other shapes, and head for the door. Your clammy hands clutch at the door handles as it creeps up behind you. You grip the handles and pull frantically. shape is nowhere to be seen, and the sense of a presence has gone. Instead, you find yourself standing in what appears to be a comfortable-looking, well-lit lounge. The silence here is most welcome. You observe various items of interest. A large, L-shaped sofa in brown leather, Several well-polished display cabinets. A mahogany dresser, home to a variety of decorative plates. A painting depicting the life of a young pauper in the 19th century. An extravagant Persian rug in crimson red. And an enormous stone fireplace. The room is warm and inviting. Still breathing heavily, you spend several moments drawing deep, relaxing breath. Doubt creeps into your mind. This room is a facade. An ugly truth is present, hidden beneath the leathery arms of the sofa and the half-cocked smile of the pauper. It's time to leave. You cross the room quickly, exiting via a small, nondescript door. You enter what appears to be a library. Shelves stacked high with books cover every wall. The books are bound in leather, and various papers, inks, glues, and fibers within bless the room with the unmistakable smell of ancient literature. One book in particular stands out, a large book, glowing amongst the others, stained with some sort of fluid, crimson, crimson fluid. fluid. You approach the shelf and remove the book. Its weight forces you to place it on a nearby reading desk. Opening the book, you are presented with a series of instructions Six. 
position. Two, think of a color. Commit to the first color that entered your mind. Three, now think of a dark color. A dark red. A crimson red. Allow this color to spill it. Look around and take a lump of ancient literature. Having exhausted the library, you head for another set of double doors on the far side of the room. Look around, you're in a dining room. There's a pungent, nauseating smell in the air. The smell of rotting food. Your eyes follow your nose, and there you see a long marble dining table. The table is host to soiled cutlery and plates, each covered with rotting food. Gray beef, brown cabbage, green sausages, purple bread, and all manner of aging, shriveled leftovers. What exactly is this place? This mansion of mystery? And what happened here? What happened to those you traveled here with? Wasn't there once talk of a prize? And why now do you once again sense a presence? The presence. Maybe it has something to do with the color of the walls in here. A dark color. A deep red. <laughs> and the shape has returned. Its twisted form haunts this mansion and all who enter it. Its ancient breath overpowers all other odors. It has returned for you. It has always been after you. Always. And as the shape closes in, your fear of it grows. Once again, you feel totally overwhelmed by the situation. This thing is after you and will continue to pursue you until it delivers your fear, the ultimate fear. Can you even remember what that fear was? Did you ever really know? You run across the dining room and burst through another set of double doors. Darkness. Pure darkness. The only thing you can hear is the beating of your heart. You've been in darkness before, but never quite like this. This is real darkness. It has substance. It envelops you like velvet. And if you were anywhere else in the world, it would be comforting. But you aren't anywhere else. You're here, in the depths of the mansion, and you aren't alone. An object begins to appear before your eyes. Out there in the blackness, it looks like some sort of picture frame at no. A, a canvas of some sort. Large, blank canvas. Your 
eyes are fixed to it. You can't look away. You see nothing else. The eye of the canvas glares at you, it, it, into you. For it already knows who you are. That fear, that darkest of all fears, is coming to the surface. It's form. It's twisted now, contorted, vengeful. And though it lacks any clear definition, you feel it looking right at you. Accusing you, cursing you. It's a part of you. There's no escape. Part of you. And it's closing in. There's nowhere to run. You're unable to move. You're glued to the ground. Amorphous arms emerge from its mass, clutching. The greatest fear you've ever known is here, in the flesh, and it wants you. The mangled limbs are covered with pus-filled sores and infected boils, bleeding and oozing as they close in on you. Face, a hideously disfigured face, appears at the center of the mass, and a single eye, red, Crimson red comes closer, closer. Thank you for listening today, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed the mansion, do leave us a comment below, and we may just invite you to join us on such a journey again. And until next time, goodbye.